Welcome to my painting studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this cute little Santa. Oh, he was so much fun to paint. And I added some little embellishments. You can see I did these all in Quickwood. I added a, a few little noses. So it has actually uh, quite a bit of dimension to it, which was so much fun to do. And I wanted to show you how I did that. I always think handmade gifts are the best. So I thought this would be a fun little gift to paint up. And the great thing is this is on a piece I bought from Dollarama. So it was around four bucks, really nice and inexpensive. You can actually find this pattern on my website. It's www.hollyhanley.ca. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for doing that and for commenting. I love to hear from you. Okay, let's get started. All right, here we go. I'm so excited. I've got my little bamboo serving paddle I'm going to be painting on. I just, again, I, like I said, I got it from Dollar Store or Dollarama. I love that store. They have lots of great painting surfaces. Okay, so this is actually made from bamboo. I'm just going to take a little bit of multi-purpose sealer, okay, so, and just give it one quick coat. And that's all we basically need. So I'm just going to go over top. You can seal the sides, the front, the back, everything. All right, our paddle board is really nice and dry. Okay, I just used my blow dryer and I'm just gonna take a sanding block and just give it a really light sand. Okay, remove that little bit of dust and we're going to trace the pattern on. So you're gonna line it up with the wood piece, however it fits. Okay, and you can slide that underneath all those little details. All right, we got the pattern traced on. Okay, you can use the white, or if you have trouble seeing the white, you can always use the gray graphite. That works just fine. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of base coating, and usually I try and use um, the biggest brush that I can fit in the area. Okay, so I've got a couple fl flat brushes. I'm gonna use a flat just to base coat his little hat. Okay, we're gonna base coat his little beard and so on. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with a little bit of that red. I absolutely love this red. It's my favorite one. It's Tuscan red. Okay, so if you wanna get that out, that'd be perfect. Okay, so whenever you're using those brushes, make sure that you wet the brush first, okay? And then tap off the excess water, just cause you don't want any extra water in your brush, it'll thin your paint, okay? And it won't cover quite as well. Okay, so we're just gonna use that little bit of red and you can base coat his hat like so. And I actually just left the background, the bamboo. I really like that nice warm color. Okay, but if you wanna change the background color, definitely, definitely go ahead. I love to see people getting creative. Santa all base coated didn't take too long which was nice and it's ready for some more details okay but before we do more painting I wanted to put I wanted to show you how I use the quick wood to make these cute little additions okay so I use quick wood to make uh, Santa's nose also Rudolph's nose and I used it to make those little ornaments that he's holding. Now, if you wanted to, you know, I'm sure at Dollar Store they have like little miniature ornaments. So you could definitely use those if you didn't want to use the quick wood. Basically, quick wood is a two-part epoxy putty. If you haven't used it before, I absolutely love it. It's so much fun and it, it's really nice because it dries quick. Usually within 10 to 15 minutes, I can paint this. So, uh, and you can sand it, it's paintable, um, it's easy to work with. Okay, so the only thing you wanna watch out for is basically remove all your jewelry. Okay, so take that off and then you can actually use um, just a little bit of cream or you can use gloves. Okay, so there's that gloves in a bottle or working hands. Okay, basically I put a little bit of that on just to protect my hands. And what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna put this to the side for just a minute. Okay, 
And I've got a little sheet protector that I like to work on, okay? And I just let the pieces dry on there, okay? So that they don't stick to anything. Okay, so you can see there's two, two colors here. Okay, so two components to this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off a small piece, okay? Now, because it does, does dry within 10, 15 minutes, you don't wanna cut off more than you can shape, okay, within that 10 minutes. So what you do is you knead it like so, okay, until it's really well mixed and you can't see those two colors anymore. It just turns into one color, okay, so it's well mixed. And it also gets a little bit warm, so you can tell that it's ready to shape when it feels a little warmer to the touch. Okay, so like I said, uh, it dries pretty quick, so you have about 10 or 15 minutes to sort of play around with it. And then it, it dries hard as a rock, okay? And usually it, it cures within a day, but I, I paint it right as soon as it's dry, okay? And I've never had any problems with it. You can sand it. You can even use uh, little cookie cutter, fondant cutters um, to make different shapes. It's really quite fun, okay? So what you're gonna do is you just pinch off a little piece, okay? I'm gonna roll it, and just like that, we have our nose for Rudolph. Okay, I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger. Okay. And you can actually take your pattern, okay, and just, just test it on there just to make sure it's about the right size. So that looks good. like so and if you find that it's really kind of sticking to your hands you can also add just a little bit of retarder to your hands if you like okay and this is gonna be Santa's nose okay again it's about the right size maybe just a little bit bigger he has a really big nose <laughs> which I think is, makes it so adorable. Okay, so you can, once you've got it on there, you can set it down so it's not quite so big. Kind of flatten it out a little bit. Okay, so I'm just sort of patting it like that, and I'm gonna test it on my little Santa pattern. So, looks good what do you think so there's that little nose and then for those little ornaments okay so again I'm just taking a little piece off you can roll it like that okay that looks about the right size okay. I'm gonna make another one like that okay they don't have to be exactly the same so not a big deal if it's a little bit different. Okay, and again, if you're not sure, you can always try it on your pattern. So this, this is pretty close. It's just a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my, I've actually ran out of quick wood, so I'm gonna mix up some more. Another ornament that I'm gonna do, just a little bit different shape. So I'm gonna pinch off another little bit. Okay, again, I always kind of start with a ball like this, so we just roll it. Okay, and then I'm going to set it over top of the pattern. This one's maybe a little bit bigger. So I'll just pinch off a little bit extra. Okay, and then I just set it down flat. Okay, so I've got it on my little sheet protector. It's really easy to see kind of sticks to the sheet protector a little bit so it's kind of easier to work with. And then I'm just shaping it into that little ornament shape. So much fun. Okay, so there's that little ornament. And you can make any shape that you want. So if you want a different kind of ornament, you can definitely do that. So, and then we're just gonna put this little clasp on. 
So I just, basically I just took, kind of flattened out a little piece, like a little, kind of like a little tiny rectangle shape, like this. Okay, and then use, use your little palette knife just to kind of put two little cuts in there. Okay, so this is what it, I'm gonna use. Okay, so there's my little ornament top, the little clasp that's gonna go on the top there. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Okay, once you paint it, it'll be fine. Don't worry. Okay, so there's one a little bit. Okay, so there's another one. They're not fancy, but they'll work. So I just have a little piece of wire. Okay, I'm gonna put this little red wire here. Okay, and then just make it into a U shape like this. Okay, and then I just put it in the top part so I can hang it, stick it in there so I can hang it off of that little string. Okay, so you just cut off a little piece and then curve it into sort of a U shape like this. Okay. So there's my little clasp. Okay, and then just poke it into the top part of that little ornament. The wood is still wet, of course, or soft. Okay, there's the last one. I'm just gonna poke it in the top there. So there's my little ornaments. Okay, and then we're going to do those H's. Okay, so again, the H's I did, I always start out with a ball, I roll it, okay, and then what you're going to do is shape it into a little rectangle. Okay, so again, it's nice with the sheet protector because you can get it the right shape and just put it right over top of your pattern. Okay, so you just shape it into a little rectangle There's our little rectangle. I'm not gonna do each one of these the same. Okay, so then I just take my palette knife and I'm gonna do two little slits, okay, on each side, each end for that little H, like this, okay? And then I'm, I have a little tiny palette knife. It actually works pretty good. Um, and then I'm just gonna poke that right here to pull the middle out. And ta-da! There's my cute little H. Okay, now if you ever have like a, just a little bit left over of the quick wood, what I do is I make little noses. Okay, so if I've got a little bit extra, I'll just make an extra nose for next time. All right, so there's one little H, and I'm gonna do them all the same. So I'm just gonna cut off a little bit more of that quick wood. Okay, I have a little extra, so I'm actually gonna make a little pom-pom for the top of his hat, because why not? Okay, 
Okay, but there's, there's all my little pieces right here. There's the little H's, and then I made a little extra pom-pom for the top of his hat. So I'm gonna let those dry. Okay, again, <laughs> nose is gonna be so cute. All right, so that's how you use the quick wood. Um, if you have any left over, just wrap it back up and it'll last for a long time as long as you don't mix those two components together like this and it's good for the next project okay so i'm just going to wait for that quick wood to dry and harden and while i'm doing that i'm going to shade the hat okay so i wanted this to be really nice and whimsical with lots of little wrinkles and so I added those little wrinkles just by shading. Okay, so I'm using the half inch angle brush. It's my favorite uh, brush to shade with. If you like using a flat brush though, that's totally fine. Okay, so a lot of times what I do when I'm shading is I actually just keep a clean brush nearby. Okay, and you can actually put a little bit of water down over the surface, okay, over the whole surface of the area that you're shading. Okay, just a thin layer of water will keep it wet a little bit longer, those, those paints wet a little longer, so that you have more time to mop and to soften. Okay, so the angle shader has a toe and a heel. I'm just going to take, dip it in the water, set down my brush on the paper towel to get rid of the excess, excess water. Okay, and I'm gonna dip the toe in a little bit of red and a little touch of black. Okay, so, and I'm just going to brush blend that color so I have a really nice dark burgundy color okay if your brush starts to split a little bit means that you have you need a little extra water in your brush okay if your paint is flowing right across your brush to the heel it means you have too much water okay so I'm just gonna take that brush I'm gonna start right on the chisel the chisel is where the hairs come to a nice line and I'm gonna start right up here like this and I'm gonna shade along the edge of that little hat okay so and i'm going to create a little bit of a wrinkle so i'm just going to pull the chisel out a little bit so it looks like there's a bit of a fold and then you can mop to soften okay so i usually i usually kind of sweep a little bit but it's really up to you what you want to do if you find that um You like to pounce, that's totally fine. Okay, so again, I'm gonna create sort of a little wrinkle just by pulling up. Okay, again, starting on the chisel, just pulling down and then I do a little walk out to kind of fill in those little corners. Okay. And if you haven't done a walkout float before, a walkout is just when you do another, like a little float, and then you do another one beside, and another one, and another one, and another one. Okay, making your float nice and wide. Okay, and then you just sort of mop all those little brush marks together, and you get a really nice wide float, like that, okay? Okay, so red, a little bit of black. Mine started out pretty dark up there. I like, I'm, I'm a dark shader. I really like dark colors, nice contrast. Okay, so I'm just pushing the toe of my brush into that corner, walking it out a little bit. Okay, use the mop just to kind of soften. And again, I'm just gonna take a little touch of water. Okay, going over top of the surface, and I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, exactly the same, just sort of pulling out in those little corners. Okay, and might be a little easier if you even Start out a little bit, push in, or you can turn your piece right around. Sometimes that's a little easier. Okay, so I'm just starting on the chisel. I'm gonna push inwards, kind of round off that little 
corner there. So I have a, a little bit of a triangle float. Okay, mop ever so lightly. Okay, so it looks like there's a few little wrinkles in his hat there. So red, a little bit of black. Okay, and I'm just gonna end on the chisel. So my chisel's pushing in. Okay, and then I'm going to add, end on the chisel there. Adding a little bit of color right at the bottom. And then I'm just gonna shade all along the hat there. Okay, so I've got my flat brush. Make sure that these floats are really nice and dry. You can see I just blow dried so I can float right over top. Okay. And I'm just gonna shade right above that hat brim there. like so. Okay, and then I'm also going to shade right along the bottom of those little mittens or gloves. Okay, you don't really see them a whole bunch because we've got, he's holding that little string in the ho ho ho. Okay, or you can just even leave that off. I think he looks cute just sitting or standing. Okay, So I'm going to put one little shade just for his little thumb there. Okay, so just shading and then pulling in with the chisel just to create that little thumb. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of water. Again, it's really dry in my house here, so the paints are drying really quick. So I'm just putting a little bit of water down, again, to keep my paints a little wet a little bit longer, just so that I have more time to mop and get rid of any little imperfections. Okay, so just gonna shade underneath that beard. So I usually do like a little pity pat. I hold my brush right on the ferrule, the metal part of the brush, just so I have lots of control. Don't worry if you get some color on the beard. We're gonna go over with white, of course. Okay, taking red and a little bit of black, and I'm gonna shade those little leggings, okay? So you just shade down the red stripe like this, Okay, and again, I blend quite a few times on my palette. And you can wet the area a little bit first again. So this is just a little bit of water, not much at all. Just a thin glaze. Okay, right in here, just shading. down the sides of each little stripe. Okay, and then I'm going to, I'm just gonna blow dry real quick. Okay, and I'm gonna add another little float just on the other side of each of the stripes. Okay, so again, you can turn your piece around, it might be a little easier for you, but um, just, Again, I'm gonna wet it a little bit so my paint just flows on. Okay, and I'm just gonna shade
down the other side of the stripe. puts the highlight right in the center of that stripe okay now that I've done a little bit of shading on each side okay and if you want I didn't add any shading but if you wanted to put a little bit of shading on the bottom of your little present you definitely can little areas done okay again I just shaded down the edges of the hat okay and I, I did mine pretty dark so if you if you're not that dark of a, a sh or like the color that dark just add a little bit less black but just sort of pulling out with the chisel just to kind of create some of those little wrinkles okay and again you can always do them again if you want them a little bit darker okay and then I'm just gonna add some little highlights so the highlights I do with a Lunar Blender and we're gonna use a little bit of this Neon's color. I love it so much. It's, it's a perfect highlight for anything red, okay? Any, any base with red, okay? So the, and if you haven't used the Lunar Blenders before, absolutely my favorite brush. They're made by Princeton and they have a rounded tip on them with a bristle hair mixed with a soft hair, okay? So they give it a really nice whimsical feel. I love them for dry brushing and you can create hair, which I'm gonna show you in a minute here. Okay, but basically uh, wet the brush first, tap off the excess water, okay, like this. And I always wet it first just to kind of soften up the bristles a little bit. Okay, so it's not your typical dry brush. Okay, so just get rid of all the excess water. You're gonna take a little bit of that fiery red. Okay, again, see how I tap it off nice and flat? Pull that water out of those little bristles. Okay, blend back and forth to evenly distribute the paint on your brush and get rid of the excess. And then I'm just going to go back and forth like this in the center of the hat, okay? Just kind of a pendulum back and forth. You can go in between those little shadows a little bit, but I absolutely love this color. It's just makes it so vibrant. Okay, and it's pretty transparent, so you can actually use quite a bit of paint. So I'm just brushing a little bit. In between the shadows on the hat. Give it a nice little highlight. Like so, we're also gonna do some on the mittens or gloves. Okay, so just taking that Lunar Blender, okay, and highlighting. The thumb and the main part of the mitten, and then a little bit on his suit, you can sort of go across around the bottom That's showing up on camera because it's such a pretty red I love it such a nice highlight and you can do it one more time just to really brighten it up okay don't forget those little stripes on the candy cane leggings okay so I don't actually go up and down like that I do sort of a diagonal and hit the center of that little 
leggings so they look nice and rounded. Okay, so I'm just going across a little bit of diagonal kind of hitting in the center for that highlight. Try not to get any on the white. Okay, there's a little bit on the present as well. Okay, and then you can, because that was so much fun, <laughs> I'm gonna do it all again, just hitting right in the center there. It only takes a sec just to make that so nice and bright. Love it. This will make a nice little present, I think, for someone. I love giving homemade presents. I love getting homemade presents. They're always so special and you always think about the person that made them. Okay. Okay, so just adding that final little highlight right in the center there. So our quick, <laughs> quick wood pieces are now dry. The first ones that I made. Okay. <laughs> Look at his big nose. Isn't that cute? Okay. And then we're going to add one more little highlight. I just used a little touch of white. Okay. So just even uh, grab a little touch of white on your dirty brush and you can add one more tiny little highlight. Okay, right in the middle there. Little dry brush. Okay, there's no water in my, my brush. Okay, adding a little, one final little dash. Okay, here and there on the hat. I'm just hitting the surface so lightly. Okay. Okay, so the next step we're going to do, I, I base coated my little ornaments because they're nice and dry now. Okay, and we've got Rudolph's nose, okay, base coated with the red, and I base coated his little, well, his huge nose, okay, so, but it doesn't, it, it just looks so cute. Okay, so what we're going to do, I actually like to double load for the cheeks and the nose to add the blush. Uh, I just think it's so much more vibrant. I love a rosy cheek and a rosy nose. So what I did was I just took a flat brush, okay, and you're gonna take that base color and also the cheek color. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking that flat brush, okay, I'm gonna dip the one side in the blush color and one side in the base color. Okay, tap off all your excess water, okay. Blend back and forth, keep your brush straight up and down like this and you really want to kind of soften that color okay blend those two colors together really nice okay so I've got it on my palette there and I'm just gonna take a tiny little bit of water put that down first like so okay and that blush color is pointing down oh my gosh that's so pretty don't you love it? Okay. Just gonna keep on trucking over here. Okay, and then use your mop brush to soften. Okay, so any little brush marks or anything will just disappear with this magical mop. Love the mop. How cute that is love it <laughs> okay and then we're gonna do the nose so with the nose again you can just kind of wet it a little bit first 
Okay, and we're going to add a nice little blush all the way around. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna load the brush again, blend back and forth. Okay, and I'm just going to add that color all the way around the nose for that nice little blush. Okay. And then I'm just really gonna press on the brush on the top to get that blending with the base there. Okay, so nice and soft. You can also float these on. So if you don't want to double load, you can definitely just float the color on. Okay, just kind of mop to soften a little bit. So there's our nose. So cute. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so you can transfer on your pattern for the little face if you like. Uh, I'm just gonna pencil in. You can use a chalk pencil or whatever you want. So there's our cute little Santa with that nose. <laughs> He's coming to life slowly. Okay, so just taking a round brush, uh, I've got a little bit of uh, black. Okay, if you have a one, I've got a one round here, or you can use a liner brush, whatever you have. Okay, and you're just gonna paint those little eyes on. And then you're just gonna pull up some little eyelashes. So start on that little line and just pull upwards. So he looks like he's smiling. And then I have a couple going the opposite way. Okay, so these ones are kind of pointing inwards like that. Okay, and then one sort of in this up, straight up and down, and then the other ones are going to angle to the outside of his face there. Just to make him look like he's really smiling. Okay, and then you can use a little bit of gray. Just mix the two colors together. So a little bit of white and black. Making a dark gray color. And then you can take a little touch of white and just paint some little sparkle dashes on the glasses. Okay, so a couple little vertical dashes to kind of suggest that there's actually lenses in those glasses. Okay, and then I added a little sparkle dash just underneath that little eye there. Okay. I added a couple of little sparkles in the form of a star on his cheeks. Okay, a little dash on the rims. Okay, 
Okay, and then once we get the hat brim on, he'll look so much happier. Okay, and then also on his nose, he gets a little sparkle dash. You can just use that lunar blender and add a little highlight, okay, with white on the top of his nose there. Okay, so again, anytime you use the lunar blender, wet it first, tap off all the excess water, pick up paint and blend back and forth. And we're just going to take that little highlight on the nose. Okay, and then we're going to do his beard. So to do the beard, I actually used the Lunar Blender again. Now the fun thing about the Lunar Blender is that you can actually use it like a rake brush. So it works great to do hair as well, okay? So when you're doing the beard, okay, and the mustache, you gotta watch which direction that you do those strokes in. Okay, so these ones are going to be angled sort of upwards a little bit. Then it's going to come down and across like this, and then these ones are down like that, okay? So just kind of watch up, it's kind of straight out and then down. And then this one comes straight down and then has angled this way, okay? And then angled to the left, okay? So just kind of watch when you do those little hair strokes. Again, when you're doing that hair and you add, you're using the lunar or the a rake brush, you add, it's just kind of like using a whole bunch of liner brushes. So you add lots of water to your paint or not, you know, enough that it's thinning it. Okay. So I'm just going to add a couple dabs of water, mix it in really well. And then if you press really lightly, you can get sort of a hair stroke. Okay. So there's a little bit too much water in my brush there. Hang on one second. Okay. But when you go on to your piece, like look at, you can get a really nice little hair stroke works great love it okay so rest your hand on your piece as much as you can okay and you're just going to pull down like this lots of little strokes and then come around you can use a round brush just to kind of curl that but the end okay and then upwards okay Lots of little strokes, and you can see it's kind of creating a hair stroke just by adding a little touch of water to the brush. So you can do animals with these brushes, you can do hair, you can dry brush. I They're so versatile. I love it. Definitely my favorite. Okay, so just adding more strokes on the other side. Okay, for this. Just kind of pulling from that nose outwards. Okay, and you just keep adding, it doesn't, you don't have to see every little stroke. Okay. And then just doing that beard and you want to leave a little bit of a space in between the mustache and the beard so that you have a little bit of shadowing and separation okay okay and I'm just doing sort of longer little tufts of hair okay adding a little bit of water so that you can really get those nice little hair strokes. So you can see they come pretty much straight down in the center and then they angle towards the left and then towards the right here. coming to life aren't they cute I think this guy would be so cute mini so if he did like a little a little ornament or something all right 
Okay, so, and then I just keep adding more little strokes until he's really nice and bright. Okay, so you can go ahead and do this again. Now, if you lose that shadowing, you can always take a little bit of gray and go back and just add it back in if you want a little extra, okay. And if you wanna add just a few little accents, sometimes it's nice to go back and just add a few little bright accents with white using a round brush, okay. So a few little thicker hairs, just strokes kind of right in here really looks kind of cute all those little details okay so I added a few right around here Put that little curl in the end there. So cute. Okay. I know you can't see his eyebrows, but you can put some in just in case. <laughs> and then another little dash on his nose just to make it really nice and bright. Okay. And then you can take, take that white and just put another little fine line right down the red. You can even go over the green when it's done, but just to give it that extra little sparkle so it looks like it's really shiny. So just a really light little line. You can use a liner brush for that if you want. Or I've got a really nice tip on this round brush so it's working pretty well. I can even add a little dash to his little mittens. Why not? Add a little swirl. It's all those little details, right? Okay. Maybe a couple little accents on his hat. Okay, and you have to smile when you do this stuff, <laughs> especially with his face. Okay, so he's coming to life. A little bit of shading on the white stripes. Okay, so we're just gonna take some blue. Okay. And the angle shader again. Okay, just really nice and light. I want you to shade down the sides of the white stripes. Okay. Don't go over the red, just on the white. Okay. And then we're going to do the other side. Okay, make sure that it's nice and dry though. You might want to blow dry. And then we're going to take um, some greens and we're gonna add highlights on the trees. Our three green colors, oops. Paint's flying everywhere. Okay, so <laughs> you can use that um, quarter inch lunar blender. 
Okay, I've got one handy right here. Wet it first, just to soften up the bristles a little bit. Okay. And we're gonna take a little bit of that medium green, okay, and just pull that from the end of the brush or the end of the branch, <laughs> sorry, in towards the center there. Okay, so just giving a little highlight just right on the edge there. Okay, and then pick the next lightest green and do the center. Okay, so just pulling from that end of the branch. Okay, and then you can just add a little bit of white and highlight that top one. Or if you don't want it so chalky, you can also add yellow. Okay, and then you can add a little shadow. Okay, so a little bit of shadow from the, just pulling from the top down like this. Okay, so right underneath, pulling down. Okay, same thing on this bottom one, just pulling just underneath that medium or the middle branch downwards. Gives it a nice little shadow. Nice little whimsical shadow right there. Okay. And then you can take just the smallest lunar blender with the, it's the little eighth inch guy, or you can use, or you can even use like a little, a little tiny eighth inch stippler brush with a little bit of white. Okay, and put some snow on. So fun. <laughs> Very whimsical. I love it. Like so. skips and looks very whimsical I just and I like the little swirly edge of the tree so and feel free to change anything you want of course this is your piece um, feel free to change colors or details anything and I always love to see pieces so if you finish your piece and put it on social media tag me at um, at Holly Hanley artist on Instagram or Facebook I love to see the finished pieces so fun. So I just took a little bit of white and uh, you can also add some little ornaments on the tree. So just take whatever colors that you want and you can dot the tree with little ornaments. Okay, like so. They don't have to be exact. Okay, so you can just Stroke that on, nothing too fancy. Just a little stripe on there, looks cute. And then we've got that little stripe around his little legs. Okay, so with the candy cane kind of stripe, I always like to put a little green accent and I just go around with the green like this, so it's got a little bit of a sweep, a little bit of an S, okay, so coming around. Don't put your hand in those little ornaments, okay? So starting on the one side, sweep down and around. 
let those dry. And then we'll add just a little dash of a highlight in the middle, okay? I'm gonna paint that little ranger's who's right now. Okay, and then we're going to do, while we have the green out, we're gonna do that sprig of pine at the top. So I bought this little star from the dollar store. It's gonna go right on his hat right here. And I'm just gonna pull some pine little sprigs out from underneath the star I thought was cute. Okay, so you can use, a, I have that one round, if you have the one liner, that works great too. Okay, so just pulling, pulling your little branch first. Okay, so there's our little twig our little center. Okay, it can go anywhere really. So there's our little, our couple little sprigs are gonna come out right there. Okay, and I always like to do mine different. <laughs> I always, I pull from the outside edge in um, on my little needles. So if you wanna pull the other way, like, it makes more sense because when you put your brush down, it's a little thicker and then it gets a little thinner as you pull outwards. I like my needles to be chunky on the edge. Okay, so I'm going to pull from that outside edge, outside, and then pull in towards that little twig, okay, or branch, like that. Okay, so my little needles, they have a bit of a curve to them, so they're curving in towards that little branch and I even add a couple in the center there just to kind of fill in okay so right in here has a little bit of a curve coming in and then they curve the other opposite way on the other side of that little branch okay right in here like so okay so there's the first layer and then i'm going to highlight with the other greens okay so you can add actually even just jump to that lighter green if you want and just add a few more little dashes okay more little needles okay i didn't really wait for that to dry just kind of adding more i just jumped right to that bright green Love it. Very bushy little pine needles. I always add a couple in the center there too. Just shorter ones. There's our little pine. Looks so cute. Okay, and then we're going to add, we've got to add a little highlight on those little legging. So just, I'm just taking that round brush and just dashing on a little highlight color right in the middle. Like this, and then a little lighter right in the middle there. So it looks like it's wrapping around. Okay, and then even a little bit of white if you want, that final little highlight. And then we're going to take a little bit of yellow and white and we're going to add a little highlight to that top of the star. So you just start at the top and pull down to give it a little bit of a highlight there. Just with my Lunar Blender. Okay, nice little highlight. Same thing on this bigger star can use the bigger lunar and just add a nice little highlight. So just kind of yellow and white. So 
so. Okay, and then we're going to do that cute little, oh, we've got some star shines from the tree down there. Okay, so just where you're gonna put that little star, you're going to add, just pull some little star shines out. And I'm just using the chisel of that little lunar blender just to pull those nice little highlight. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost done. Uh, we've got that little reindeer. Okay, next. And for that guy, uh, you know, my kids laughed when they looked at this little reindeer. I thought, I thought it was cute. They were like, oh, it looks kind of like a little hedgehog. But um, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> I think he's cute. So you can definitely change it if you want. Um, but I'm just going to take that base color, add a little touch of white, and just kind of give him a little bit of a highlight kind of along those little ears. Okay, just using that small lunar. Okay, so he's got some little tufts. Kind of dry brush some fluff there. <laughs> so he looks nice and fluffy. Just kind of back and forth. Okay. And then he needs some cheeks. So let's just dry brush a little bit of a cheek color on there. Maybe a little bit in the ears. Highlight those little feet or hooves a little bit with a dry brush just by adding a little white to the base. Okay, maybe a little extra white on the little antlers to make them really show up. Okay. like so and then I used a little round brush and just did a few little swirls on that guy okay so I just kind of painted lighter little swirls all over his fur <laughs> or his coat I thought I thought it was cute so you can do whatever you like whatever you think looks good I just thought it was something fun and whimsical. Okay. Just using that little round brush. Okay, and then he gets a little smile and two little eyes. Okay, so
And if you want to the little antlers to show up a little bit brighter, just kind of add some outlines with black here and there. Okay, so there's our little guy. So cute. And then we need to dry brush a little highlight on his shoes. Okay, so the shoes, you can just give it a little bit of white. Okay, so just using my Lunar Blender. Okay, make sure you get rid of all the excess water. The last, we're going to add a little bit of, I'm going to add the little white ribbon on the present. Hey, it's coming along and we're going to do those little H's and the ornaments. The ornaments, uh, please get creative with these. Like you don't have to do the same as me. If you like them, you can, but if you want to change it and do your own thing, definitely can. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight okay, on with a little bit of that neon. Need a little bit of pick me up here. So just dry brushing a little bit of a highlight on them. Okay, that brightens them up already. And I just painted those little clasps on the top with the yellow. Okay, so I've got my little H's all base coated. And you can, if you've got some like little edges that are sort of pokey, you can sand those. So if you wanted to, you could do that. Okay, and I have, I made myself a little glitter bath. I did, <laughs> I'm going to paint um, on one of the little H's. Okay, I am gonna paint a little belt because I thought that would be cute. <clears throat> okay, so just like this one, all I did was I took a little bit of black and Okay, I base coated that little belt with the yellow. Okay, and you could use a metallic gold here too. So I dipped these actually in glitter. I thought that would be kind of fun to have them very glittery. So what I did was you can use any anything. Um, if you have some of that oh, like multi-purpose sealer, you can paint that on and then dip it in or you can use this stuff. So you can take your flat brush and just paint on a layer of red nebula and leave it. That looks really pretty too, but I'm gonna go a little bit more and just dip it right into the glitter. So while this is still wet, I'm just gonna throw it in there. And ta-da! right? Wow. 
Okay. <laughs> so pretty. Okay, and I did paint a little bit of this glitter. Whoops. This red nebula, it's so pretty. So you can paint that on the red stripes if you want, on his legs. Okay, I also painted it over top of Rudolph's nose. Okay, and it might be easier if you just hot glue this on first. It will be easier. Okay. I put some on little Santa's hat. in the shadow areas really okay and then this is absolutely my favorite glitter it's the galaxy glitter ice comet um, so if you don't have the red nebula you can use this because um, it it's so pretty it just goes over top of anything and makes it sparkle so you can it just sort of picks up the colors underneath so I'm just gonna paint this on top of the white leggings I'm gonna put this all around the bottom of the tree where the white is okay even on those little ornaments I'm gonna fire up my glue gun here and I'm gonna show you the antiquing as well okay and then you're gonna do the lettering on the little star so you can paint on whatever you like uh, I put on Merry Christmas so I'm gonna just do the same okay so just use your liner brush and I used a little bit of red okay you can transfer on your pattern or just wing it whatever you like Okay, add maybe just a touch of water to your paint just so that it flows a little bit better. Okay, and I'm just going to wing it because that's how I roll. Okay, so whenever you're doing lettering, always try and start at the top of the letter and pull down. So I'm going to do um, a little bit of antiquing, okay, which is adding that little darkness around the edge. I love the antiquing because it sort of gives it a nice warm feel, okay? So, and to do that, you actually use a little bit of odorless thinner and a little bit of oil paint, okay? So if you don't want to use that, um, you can actually just take a little bit of burnt umber and just shade around the edges, maybe burnt umber and a little touch of black. Okay, um, but I'm gonna use this. It's just one of my favorite techniques. Okay, so you're gonna use that. I like the Winton oil color. It's a really nice warm brown. Okay, and I got a little cloth. Okay, so I'm just gonna take that with a little bit of odorless thinner. Make sure everything's really nice and dry. Okay. So this will take off any graphite lines as well. So if you have any of those, I'm gonna take off that little star. Okay. And I basically, I'm just gonna rub this over the edge. And this just makes the oil paint movable. Okay, so you're just gonna rub this over top. Okay, it won't take your paint off or anything like that. It'll just take the graphite lines off, which is nice. Okay, and then you take another cloth and put just a teeny tiny little bit of oil paint on the tip of your cloth, like this. And this, okay, you rub it right around the edge like this. I'm, I'm going to put the snow text on after. Oh, 
like so. You can brush a little bit on the edge just to make it nice and dark. So a, some shop towel would actually work great for this. It's a little thicker, softer cloth. So if you have some of that, I would definitely use that. Okay. Just brushing a little bit. You can even put a little bit underneath the Santa here if you want a little extra shadow. A little bit a little bit goes a long way so kind of watch that all right doesn't that give it a nice warm feel love it love antiquing Okay, so this is just odorless thinner, a little bit of burnt umber oil paint. Okay, rub it around the edges. And you can let this dry overnight and then just spray varnish if you like. Okay, I'm gonna live dangerously and just keep going. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of snow text and I'm going to put this all along for his little hat brim and then also I made this out of the quick wood remember and I kind of poked it a little bit I'm going to put some snow text on there so it just stands right out looks super cute adds a little extra dimension so I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue these on just to make it a little easier to put that snow on Okay, hold them in place. Okay, there's that. And then my little star. On the tree. Okay, so this one, I'm just using some snow text. Okay, just, um, you can use a stippler brush to apply it. So just take a stippler and you can wet it a little bit first. A little bit of snow text. Okay, and I'm just going to put some snow text on top of that little piece that I made with the quick wood just to make it really nice and fluffy. Okay. And then I'm going to put this on his hat brim. Okay, and I'm just gonna add a little bit on the pine. Just kind of stroke a little bit kind of on top with your stippler. I'm using a little quarter inch stippler. Okay. Like that. Like so, he's so cute. Okay, and then you're going to take a little bit of glitter and while it's still wet, just sprinkle that glitter on and make that snow sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle. Okay, you can't forget the glitter. Just makes it look fabulous. Okay. Cute, right? Okay, and then I've got a little bit of cord. 
that I'm just going to glue on. You just, oh, I forgot his little, his little um, cuffs on his mitts right here. Okay, don't forget those. All right, and then you're just going to decorate your little ornaments. I put that little piece of cording on the little candy cane cord. Looks so darn cute. And so when this is dry, I'm just gonna put that on. And I just tied a little bow on the ends, like so. Okay, and then I just hot glued on the little H's. Okay, and the you can string those little ornaments on like I did here, okay, like that. And then you can spray varnish and tie a little bow on the top if you like, but that's basically it. The You can take your, um, just, I didn't really want to add too much for snowflakes because there's a lot going on in this piece already. Like you could definitely um, t glue on some little snowflakes. I kept it pretty simple. I just put little dots like this, okay? So use the end of your brush or you can use a stylus, okay? And I just added some fun little dots in the background. Of course, be careful. Don't smear those. Like so. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please comment and uh, add a like if you like the video. Okay, and if you finish this piece and you t uh, post it, please tag me. I love to see the finished pieces or even send me an email. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and this guy brings a little happiness to your heart this holiday season. And I hope you have fun. I'm Holly Hanley. Thank you so much for painting with me.